It's now time for members' statements. The member from Halliburton, Kawartha Lakes, Brock. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yesterday's Auditor General's report confirms what drivers in my riding have known all along, that something was terribly wrong on their provincial highways. Each snowfall, I would hear complaints from residents in my riding of Halliburton, Kawartha Lakes, Brock. I brought their concerns to the attention of MTO officials time after time. However, we would never see any improvements. Now, thanks to a request from my colleague, the member from Leeds Grenville, and the work of the Auditor General, we now know the truth. For five years, the Liberal government knowingly lowered highway road maintenance standards and put motorists at risk. The report is a scathing condemnation of this government's performance when it comes to protecting the safety of drivers. We now know the ministry approved contracts that led to fewer pieces of equipment on the road, fewer patrols to monitor dangerous conditions, and less sand, salt, and anti-icing liquid being applied. Ensuring our roads are as safe as possible during the winter's driving season is one of the fundamental responsibilities of the Ministry of Transportation. This is just not about poor service. It's about people's safety on our roads. This winter, I worked with uh, both Carillion and MTO officials in an effort to remedy the problems we're experiencing. However, it is the Ministry of Transportation that dictates the standards and the level of service. These contracts fail to adequately maintain our provincial highways and need to be reevaluated by the minister. The government knew about it five years ago but did nothing to address these risks, and people lost their lives as a result. I hope today he really means that Thank he's you. going to correct the problem. Member Stevens, the member from Nickelbelt. Thank you, Speaker. I'd like to share with you that the OPP detachment has had a helicopter stationed at Sudbury Airport to assist in local search and rescue operations since 1991. I learned with surprise of a plan to move this helicopter out of Sudbury to Aurelia, where it will sit beside the other OPP rescue helicopter. Mr. Speaker, I cannot stress enough what a short-sighted decision this is. Aurelia is an hour and 20 minutes flight away from Sudbury, and there is already an OPP search and rescue helicopter there. From, to make matters worse, from November to March, the Aurelia helicopter base is subjected to almost daily lake effect, with snow, fog and rain, limiting the flight opportunities, whereas the Sudbury helicopter base is exceptionally good for flying with clear weather pretty much all year round. The Sudbury base has been so successful that we were able to receive a new Eurocopter EC-135 helicopters in 2001 to replace the old Twin Star helicopter that was quite dated. Since the search and rescue helicopter was stationed in Sudbury, aircraft and air crews have been responsible for saving hundreds of lives of Northerners, responding, responding to calls for service from a wide variety of policing agencies throughout Northern Ontario, all the way to Thunder Bay. Mr. Speaker, why do the government want to move these helicopters farther away from their target operational areas? I would say shame on the Liberal for Thank refusing you. to consult us on this important decision. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to rise today and speak about an event that took place in Halton over the weekend. This past Saturday in Oakville, a dream project for the World Islamic Mission Canada took another step towards becoming a reality. Joined by hundreds of people, dignitaries, and my friend, the Minister of Labour, we celebrated the groundbreaking of a new state-of-the-art mosque, the Masjid Nur ul Haram. Once completed, this breathtaking new building will become the largest Islamic centre in Ontario. It will give members of the local Islamic community a beautiful place to come and worship. And it will not only give Oakville a beautiful new addition to its community landscape, but it will enhance its already rich and vibrant culture. The energy at the groundbreaking was electric. It was very clear what this meant, not just to the Oakville community, but to all local Muslims who have been eagerly awaiting construction uh, to get underway. Mr. Speaker, this breathtaking new mosque will not only be a building for Muslims to enjoy, but for all residents from Halton and all walks of life to come and experience together. A place to come together with family, friends and neighbours to celebrate the diversity that makes us strong and to educate one another about our differences in culture and religion. Mr. Speaker, we are grateful uh, to the community's contributions and I look forward to seeing this new mosque built. Thank you very much. Thank you. And the famous member from Perth, Wellington. Thank you, Speaker. Um, Speaker, on Tuesday I was pleased to attend the groundbreaking ceremony of the, for the uh, Mental Rural Health Centre. 
This is a project that has been in the works for quite a while. I want to recognize just a few of the community leaders who have championed this project. Thank you to the North Wellington Health Care team, including President and CEO Jerome Quenneville and Tom Sullivan and the Board of Directors, the Waterloo Wellington, the Waterloo Wellington Lynn, including Director Dale Small, the Town of Minnow and the Mayor of George and Mayor George Bridge, Dr. Chris Cressy and the Family Health Team, Luann Ward and the Palmerston and District Hospital Foundation, and finally David Craig and his team whose leadership has made all the difference. The, the Mental Rural Health Centre will be a main site for a number of community health partners and will provide space to primary care physicians. This is truly a community project with all the funding coming from the Palmerston and District Hospital Foundation, North Wellington Healthcare and the Town of Minnow. This project would not have been possible without the generous contributions from residents of Palmerston. It may have taken some time, but I'm glad the government finally issued the approvals needed for this project to begin. We thank them for it. Health care is so important to rural communities, and I know this facility will help to deliver the very best. That's why I want to continue doing everything I can to support this project right up until its opening day and beyond. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Simmons, the member from Temiskamee, Hopper. Thank you, Speaker. After I was first elected in, I believe, October 2011, that first winter, we got all kinds of complaints about the road. So being a new MPP, I went to the MTO and asked for a briefing from my local MTO, to which I was told everything was fine, we're meeting our goals 95% of the time. So, you know, basically, your people are complaining for not really much reason. So I went back to the office, my staff and I, we thought how we were going to combat this, and we came up with the idea of well, we're going to need our own reporting system. So we created the northernroadreport.com to where we asked people to send specific times and pictures so we could go back to the MTO and show them. And you know what happened after that, Speaker? We got a letter from the Minister of Transportation telling us to take the northernroadreport.com down because we could be confusing people. They should talk to the MTO. Well, now we find out that my people weren't wrong and the Northern Road Report did a lot of good. Now we find out from the Auditor General that my people were right. And instead of actually listening to the people, instead of the minister actually telling people to shut their complaints down, what this government should have been doing is looking at what people were saying. Because in my riding, with road closures, accidents, and yes, people died in my riding from bad roads. And that has to stop. It has to stop now. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to rise in the House today to recognize Asian Corps Collegiate Institute, a high school in my riding of Scarborough Asian Corps, for the impressive 100 years of operation. Recognized as the oldest high school in Scarborough, ACI has continued to be a leader in education with a strong academic record, award-winning music and sports programs, and engaged inclusive student body. In 2012, two grade 12 students, Matthew Ho and Asad Muhammad, made international headlines. They successfully launched a homemade balloon and Lego man into our stratosphere. ACI teachers Ashley Lenot, Karen Randall, and Tammy Cooper and students formed the ACI Straight Gaze Alliance seven years ago to promote safe and inclusive learning environment. Mr. Speaker, recently the Premier and I visited their school in the 2015 International Pink Day celebrating diversity and combating bullying. It is not a surprise that many ACI students have gone on to become leaders in their community, including the famous actor Jim Carrey, Michael Overs, founder and CEO of Pizza Pizza, Ed Clark, former president and CEO of T TD Bank Group, and Jean Kennedy Campbell, former public health nurse and recognized Scarborough matriarch. Speaker, tomorrow I'll be joining hundreds of students and alumni and the community in celebrating the achievement in education ACI has made for the past 100 years. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Huron Bruce. Thank you, Speaker. It's my pleasure today to congratulate a constituent of mine, as well as my Ultra Matter, on their success at the National Agri Marketing Association competition. Matthew Carter from Brussels was one of 10 University of Guelph students who headed to Kansas City, Missouri earlier this month to participate in a marketing competition. His group's product or project called the Strawberries created a comprehensive marketing plan 
for this bite-sized strawberry. And Matt explained that his team focused on three marketable traits for their strawberries. Health, because strawberries, as you know, are packed with vitamins and antioxidants, and they're deemed a superfood. They're easy to eat in a hurry, and they have bite-sized convenience. They placed fourth out of 28 teams from across North America in the People's Choice Division. This Griffin team was also voted most favourite team by the other 27 teams, and I'm pleased to say they also won an outstanding chapter award. The University of Guelph team was only the, the only school from Ontario and the only one of two schools from Canada. I'm extremely proud of Matt and my fellow Griffins for doing such a great job at this prestigious competition. Hearing of the successful program like this and, and success that we have from the Department of Food, Agricultural and Resource Economics at Guelph should remind us of the true importance of agri-food education and the amazing opportunities that they, it brings with it. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. The member from Etobicoke Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I rise in the House this afternoon to speak about deafblind Ontario services. Mr. Speaker, Deafblind uh, Ontario Services was at Queen's Park this past Wednesday, celebrating 25 years as an organization supporting individuals who are deafblind across this province uh, through their residential and community services. I want to congratulate this or incredible organization for the wonderful work they've done uh, supporting people over the last 25 years. And today, Deafblind Services Ontario cares for more than 60 individuals operates 15 residences in three apartments in York Region, Simcoe County, Middlesex-Oxford, Durham-Peterborough, Kitchener-Waterloo, and Ottawa. Mr. Speaker, to think this organization began in 1989 with a small group of dedicated parents who lobbied the government for community-based supported living programs for their children is simply an incredible testament to what a group of dedicated parents can achieve for their children. Today, we value community inclusion in supporting people with disabilities to become part of everyday life of their communities. DBOS is a leader in the field of intervener services, providing high-quality services with committed staff who serve some of the most complex cases in Ontario. And I wish to applaud their, uh, their innovative approaches to delivering services. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, this is an organization that has done incredible work for some of the most challenged people in our community and uh, they deserve our complete support and continued uh, encouragement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. For the member statement, the member from Brampton Springdale. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, today we, would have, we have had the pleasure of being visited by the Canadian Cancer Society as the month of April is recognized as Cancer, Cancer Awareness Month in Canada. Throughout the month, volunteers are involved in numerous activities and fundraising campaigns to spread the awareness on the fight against cancer. Supporters are seen wearing the symbolic ye yellow daffodils to pay tribute to those battling cancer and also to those who, remember, who they may have lost to the tragic disease. Mr. Speaker, during the month of during the month of April, many of the supporters canvassed neighbourhoods seeking donations for the Canadian Cancer Society. I had the pleasure of meeting one such individual who knocked on my door and happens to be a resident of Brampton Springdale. Mr. Narinder Singh, who is a cancer survivor, has made it his mission to spread awareness by not only canvassing to raise funds, but also he encourages others to be tested regularly and hopes that those who do have cancer will catch it early and increase their survival rates. Mr. Speaker, as we are now on the final day in the month of April, I would hope that we will all continue to spread the awareness throughout the year. Cancer does not take a day off, and nor should we. It is a 24-7, 365-day-a-year battle. Unfortunately, we all know someone who is either currently fighting or has lost their life to cancer. It does not discriminate against age, sex, race. It actually affects all of us equally. Mr. Speaker, I would like to encourage all of those in this House and all Ontarians to continue to spread the word to ensure that you and your loved ones continue to get regular checkups and stay one step ahead. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank all members for their statements. The member for